Wow, we are back for another episode of Wow Warrior, and I have an incredible guest with me, and I know you're going to agree, she has been on Dr. Oz five times, people. She has 20, I said 20 to zero books, and a multitude of other things. She has been on many talk shows, etc. I am so excited to introduce you to this amazing Wow Warrior. Welcome, Stacy Chalimi to Wow Warrior. Hi, Sherry. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Now, like 20 books in and of itself is like <laughs> tremendous to me. Like, and everybody has a story and I know part of yours and I want to have you share a little bit about those stories. Um, but I want to back up and have you share with our viewers a little bit. I know you're a, you're a speaker and a wonderful coach, but I want you to talk about Stacy the person. Let's find out a little bit about who Stacy Cellini is. Can you tell us a little bit about how your journey started? I'd love to. So when people ask me that question, I have to go back into my childhood years because it really all began, you know, when I was five years old and my, I had had an ear infection. I had a little virus and, you know, I went to the doctor, they gave me medication. And all of a sudden my mom heard a gurgling sound that night in my room. So she went on to check on me and I actually was turning blue and I was in a grand mal seizure. I was rushed to the hospital and they found that the virus I had had traveled to my brain and it turned into encephalitis and they induced me into a coma and they didn't know what was going to happen. And then they came to my parents and they said, most likely if she comes out of this coma, she'll probably be paraplegic or she'll have severe brain damage. Well, they were devastated. And my father, who was from Greece, he came from a little island in Greece. There was one church, one statue. He was visualizing that statue. And that statue was known to have tears roll down its eyes. And he told me that he was praying to that statue and hoping that I would be okay. And he said on the fourth day, he looked up and my eyes opened and I looked at him and I said, Daddy, can I have McDonald's French fries? And he was ecstatic. And, you know, I didn't end up paraplegic. I didn't have brain damage, but I did end up with epilepsy. Till this day, they can't find the scar tissue that caused the epilepsy, but it was a lifelong kind of roller coaster ride for me. And when I got into college, it became even more um, challenging because of late night studying, the stress of getting good grades, my seizures increased. And at one point, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to actually be able to complete college. And that was on my bucket list. I wanted to finish college and I had these big dreams for myself. And so I just wrote a letter and I sent it to the um, Epilepsy Foundation. They had a magazine. I said, please publish this letter. And in this letter, I said, how do you cope with epilepsy? I said, please share your stories with me. Because when I went to the library, there was like five books about epilepsy written by doctors and medical terminology. And if you weren't a doctor, you had no clue what they were talking about. So to my surprise, there was three to 400 letters that came from all of the United States and Canada. These letters were so inspiring. They talked about, uh, you know, how they cope with it, how to get through it. And I took all those letters. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I wasn't alone. And I used, I created a regiment for myself and I finished college and I got through it. And I said, one day I'm going to write a book and I'm going to put all these letters together and I'm going to write, write and show everybody how I got through it and I'm going to help someone. And then I ended up getting a really big corporate job after college. And I thought I was living the lime life. You know, any young girl that comes out of college lands this great job. I was like, I was like in my, you know. Oh, and you know what? I got, I got to stop you right there, Stacey. Like, because you gave me chills. Like <laughs> when you just shared that, that is such an example of how the ripple of blessings can work, right? And and I know you're going to you're gonna move into how you use that experience to create the ripple of blessings forward. But I want, I don't want to let that moment go by without yeah. acknowledging all those people that poured their hearts and stories into you that changed the trajectory of your life, which I know you're going to share with us how that that has manifested in your life. But I want to acknowledge every single one of those people and the Epilepsy Foundation that, that published it, right? That allowed yeah. your story 
to spread and, and your plea for help, right? Like, oh, cause yeah. you could have just not written the letter at all. And where would your life be today in a very different place? I imagine. So, you know, nothing happens by accident. I know we, we've had that conversation before, but yeah. I just wanted to point out about that particular spot that was just such an inflow of blessings, because I know you're going to share, we're going to talk some more about how the blessings have continued to ripple out from you that were given to you. So yeah. go ahead and share with us the story uh, at work. Okay. So, you know, I was, I had this really big job and I, everything was going great. And then one day I felt a funny feeling and they call it an aura. And basically mm -hmm. it's kind of like a signal that a seizure is going to come. So I was in a big hallway. I'm looking around, I'm trying to find an area where no one would see me because my whole life I hid when I had a seizure, I tried to go somewhere where nobody would see me have it, but there was nowhere to go. And I ended up falling on the floor. I was conscious, but I couldn't move. And one of the executives just stepped over me like I was just like a piece of garbage on the floor and kept walking. And I saw him do it because I was conscious, but I couldn't move. I couldn't talk. And I said to myself, I can't believe this guy just walked over me. I'm like, you know, he didn't help me. He didn't get help me get up or anything. And then 30 minutes later, one of the co-assistants came over and said, Stacy, you're doing such a great job, but you're not exactly what we're looking for right now. And I knew it was because they saw me have the seizure and they just didn't want anything ab about me, you know? And uh, so, you know, I didn't let it get me down. I said, you know what? There's something better out there. I said, it just isn't meant to be. When things don't happen the way you want them, I've learned in life, it's just not meant to be. So I walked out of there with my head up high and I said, one day I'm going to be a success. And I kept that in the back of my head and I was going to be a success. And so I started to write. I started to create, you know, different pieces. I started a freelance business. I started working with really big names and I ended up meeting an herbalist. And he says, I need a lot of research done on natural healing. And I said, oh, this is cool. So I start researching about holistic healing, herbals, detox, all this stuff. And I said, wow, you know, a lot of this stuff could apply to my own life. So I started to start to do some of the stuff that I was learning to my own life. And my seizures went from 12 to 9 to 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, to the point where I was controlled. So with using my medication, changing my lifestyle, and doing holistic living, all those things together I was able to control my seizures. So nice. I was so inspired that I actually put together during the, that course of that time, I put together all those letters I was talking about. I created my regimen. I wrote that book and I called it epilepsy. You're not alone because the one thing that came in my head, those letters kind of showed me that. Yeah. Right. By my heart that I wasn't alone. And I wrote the, that book and it became a bestseller because there was no books about coping with epilepsy. You have books, you know, about the treatment, the causes, the symptoms, but nobody talked about how to cope with it. And I wrote that book and then I took six more years to research and write and I created the complete herbal guide to teach people about holistic living, to teach them about supplements, to teach them about how changing the trajectory of their life and focusing on a different way to retrain their brain. And I was hoping that I could help more than just people with epilepsy, that I could help people of anybody that wants to improve their life. So I kind of went on that journey and then I had created a little blogger. I don't know if you remember blogger. Google gave out a free little blog, you know, when, when it first came out. And I started a little blog and immediately 400 people came on. I was like, wow, people like this. They like the natural healing. So then I, I started to write about natural healing. I said, you know, all this stuff that I talked about in the book could actually help everybody. So then I, I met a freelancer and he created websites and he, I was doing work for him. He said, you know, Stacy, I could create a little, that little blog you have, I can create a wonderful website for you. And he did. And the website grew from 10,000 to a hundred thousand and it just grew and my writing spread. And I, and I started to just, you know, spread the word and it just traveled. And now I, that's what I do. And I realize and one thing I got it, I got it before you inject, I got to say, I got an email when, when we started getting emails back then, 
I opened the email and a person wrote to me and they said, I was on the verge of suicide. I found your book in Barnes and Nobles and you saved my life. And I just want to say thank you. Now that yeah. was when the light bulb went off. Yes, that was when yeah. the light bulb went off. And I realized, you know what? This is my purpose in life. I realized that the, the, wis the power of the wisdom of words can be so powerful and that what we say to other human beings can have such an impact on their lives. And at that moment, I realized that this is what I was meant to be. This is what meant to be. This is what my calling was. And this is what I was going to do. I was going to help people get to the point where they can live the life they deserve to live their life to their tr true potential and to be able to feel good about themselves. I just love that so much. And, you know, Oh my gosh, like a thousand things are going through my mind. Like number one, like talking about warrior, like, wow, that warrior spirit, that never give up spirit. It's very evident in you, Stacy. which, you know, I like to say that a wow warrior, truly when they walk in a room, the only thing that can be said is wow. And that is completely true of you as well. And, you know, the, the thing that's interesting is like, how things play out in our lives and they, they keep pushing you towards the path you're meant for. Right. Because yeah. you thought when you got that job, that that was going to be the great thing and it was all wonderful. And that happened, but that happened so that you could stand in this purpose that you're talking about. And, you know, I love that you shared the, the story about the person that found that book, because you're right. There is a lot of intellectual, if you want to use that word, right. uh, books and things like that out there. But this is a book for people that you wrote, right? This was me yeah. being a person writing for other people in the same, you know, uh, situation, which is one of the things that, and I, I, too, have written many books and have shared my my personal story. Can you share like a little bit about that? Because a lot of times people are, they think their story isn't that big of a deal because they're used to it. It's their story, right? Um, but can you share a little bit about sharing your story and how important it was for you to share it and why you felt so strongly that it was important to share your story, even that example, for example. So, you know, for years, I'll be truthful, for years, I, I did not want anyone to know that I had epilepsy and I struggled with that. And, you know, I was in denial at one point. I did not accept that I had epilepsy. I did not love the person that I saw in the mirror. I was holding a lot of anger, low self-esteem, and I I slowly, when I realized, when I start, when I realized that I wasn't the only one and I realized, and I put that regiment together and I was able to move forward in life, I realized that first of all, I wasn't the only one. Every single person in this life has a story. Everybody goes through something, you know, and it's, and we have, you know, and it's not, it's not about pity in ourselves. You know, when I was trying to get the right drug, they had me in trial groups and people were taking up to 300 seizures a day. People were banging on their bodies, not purposely, but they were in a, in a full ground wall seizure. They had brain damage, some of these people. And I looked around, I said, wow, I said, I'm pitying myself. I should be lucky. You know, I should, I, I, you know, these are the people that are struggling. The, you know, everybody has a story. Everybody struggles and don't, you know, you can't feel where does feeling sorry for yourself get you in life? You know, your story could save a person's life. Everyone has gone through things in life. No person's life is perfect. And your story could actually change another person's life because I guarantee you there is somebody out there or there are millions of people out there or hundreds of people out there that have the same similar story but don't know what to do. Don't know, They don't know how to get to that second level. And by you sharing your story and if you talk about how you overcome something, you could be helping and saving someone else's life. And I got to tell you, what yeah, is somebody you don't even know, right? Like, that's the point. You may never even know that you do it. 
And, you know, and storytelling is so important because when you're in a room full of people and someone can relate to you, that bond is priceless. You know, they, you know, they're, they're inspired by you. You know, if you've learned how to get to the next level or overcome something, you've just inspired someone and you've shown someone a way that they could get to it or just inspired, ignite the light underneath the, them to actually want to do something about whatever they're going through. You know, it's yeah, so absolutely. And I, I always like to say, Stacy, somebody somewhere out there is waiting for you. Like they're literally waiting for you because you are the lifeline. Like that person that walked in the Barnes and Noble and didn't know that they were going to find their lifeline inside the book that you wrote, but it was your story. And that was the lifeline. I believe that that's true in every person's story. Sometimes yeah. it's you sharing the story and getting it outside of yourself that you're creating your own lifeline, right? Because you're letting yeah. go of the story and putting it out there so that it isn't something to hide. Like you said, isn't something to be ashamed of. It's just part of your experiences. You know, it doesn't define you. It is just part of you. And that is so critically important in sharing your story. And I'm so glad that you shared your story, not just for the person who was saved from doing that, but also for all the people yet who are just meeting you for the first time. And we're going to talk some more about, I know you have a whole bunch more books, you're an incredible speaker, and we're going to talk about why speaking is such an important part of what you do, and, and you also coach people as well. So we're going to talk about that when we come back from this quick break. And we are back with Stacy Chalimi. And my goodness, the first segment was so amazing and so powerful and so energy filled. I'm excited to talk more with you, Stacy, and learn more about the different ways that you are impacting. As we mentioned in your intro that you do have 20 books, we did talk about the first one. Can you tell us a little bit more about how the other books came to be? And um, I know you've had some evolution in your books as well. The first one was specifically to uh, provide that resource for people that have ep epilepsy to not feel alone. But can we talk about some of the other books that you've done? Sure. So, you know, I've written about the, the power of positivity. I feel, you know, the power of positivity can get us through life. And I, and that was one of the things that got me through life. And even in my latest book, I talk about, I talk about uh, empower yourself. Don't let your conditions empower you. And that means for anything. So it can go from not, not just having epilepsy, but it can go from, you know, having stress, anxiety, diabetes, whatever the hell is going on with you this book will help you get through it. And I dedicated one whole chapter to the power of positivity because in anything that go, you go through in life, you know, instead of feeling negative and instead of, instead of feeling, you know, bad for yourself or pitying yourself, everything we go in life, we, we can pull something positive from it. And by t pulling something positive through anything we go through life, we actually strengthen ourselves. So for me, having epilepsy, you know, I learned that, you know, it took me on a different journey. It made me stronger as a person. It gave me resilience. It made me look at people differently. You know, instead of, you know, I, I, I don't look at people and judge people. I, I see the beauty in everyone. Now, would I have been like that if I live, if I worked the corporate life and I, I was living the fast lane? No, I'd probably be a different completely different type of personality. But instead, I was taken on this journey and I feel compassion for everybody. And it's helped me personally. And I've been able to help others through it. So I drew up, 
I draw positiveness out of every situation I go through in life. Instead of instead of getting depressed, instead of going through, you know, and I'm not gonna say I never get depressed. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect. I go I go through those moments just like everybody else. But when I get into those moments, or if I'm going through life and I'm going through an obstacle, I try to focus on the positive, and I try to and I and I try to pull positive things out from that moment, that obstacle I'm going through, and that actually helps strengthen me and helps me move forward. And I that you know being positive. If you're not positive, you're not going to be able to move forward in life. You have to be. You have to have a, a positive mentality, and you could do that by retraining your brain, the way we think, the way we look at life, the way we react. You know, it's a process. Absolutely, and I think you just sort of articulated the exact reason why you've been able to navigate having epilepsy so well. Not because it isn't life altering, but because you've chosen to always see the blessings, even in the lesson, lessons, and also even in the hard things, you've always looked to find the blessing and the positive uh, side of it or the positive learning from it. We can learn something positive from everything, no matter how negative it is. And I don't, I always say I do the same thing, Stacey, and I don't care if people call me Pollyanna or whatever you want to call me. <laughs> like, but to me, that is the space that I want to live in as well, exactly where you are. That is the lane I am in. It's one of the reasons why I resonated with you when I met you. Um, yeah. is because of that, because I too will find there might be one good thing out of a hundred bad things in a row, but I'm going to, I'm going to look to the positive thing and I'm going to take that out of it. And yeah. I think that's evident by how you've lived your life. You know, yes, the event like that you spoke of happened at work, but you took out of it something and made something out of it, even though it seemed like a bad thing. Actually, it opened a door, right? For yeah. you to expand yourself. It was meant for you anyway, but you took that as a positive and you could be upset about that or whatever. I don't get that at all from you. I get that as you saw that as that opened opportunity for you and you yeah. have run with that not just in the in the ways that you are now serving, like you're speaking. And, and I do want to talk about that because it's so important to you to get onto platforms to be heard. Tell us what you are most passionate about speaking. So if someone's looking for a speaker, tell us what you are most passionate about sharing from the stage on. I love to talk to people on how to reach their true potential in life. You know, I talk about how to reduce stress and how to reach your potential, your true potential, because everyone, we all have, we all have a different definition of what our true potential is, but we all have the ability to grow and we all have the ability to, to make our dreams a reality. And, you know, I talk about stress because stress, especially after COVID, you know, we all go through stress, but people don't realize 70% of illnesses is caused by stress. When you're under stress, you can't focus, you can't think clearly. It affects your personal life. It affects you at work. It's just, you know, stress is, is a killer. And we, you know, so one thing we have to learn is coping skills and we can make it fun. We can make it enjoyable, but we have to learn different ways that we can reduce stress in our homes privately, even in the public, when we feel stressed out, what can we do to reduce our stress level? And also to learn how to create and, and you know, short-term goals and long-term goals to figure out what we want in life and then to go after it and move forward and to reach our true potentials, you know, to, to understand what we are actually capable of doing and get in there, you know, because everybody has a different definition. We're all not meant to be the same. If we were, we'd be all robots doing the same exact thing, but everybody's different. But some people have low self-esteem and they're like, I'll never be able to be this. You know, I'll never be able to do that. Well, yes, you can, you know, but you might have to go a different route, but you could get there if you really want it. And so let me show you how, you know, and when I go on stage, I love speaking on stage because I feel a connection with people and, you know, the room gets quiet, people get engaged. We laugh, we talk, you know, people come up afterwards and people will give me hugs. And I know that I, I've, I've, I've done something to help that person, to change that person. And it feels so good because 
I truly love interacting with others. And I feel the best way to interact with people is to be in a room with them, even virtual when you have a group session, if you can't be with them, everybody's there for one common goal. And, you know, by hearing somebody speak, like we talked about the power, the wisdom of words, you know, whether it be in a, a virtually a workshop, a keynote, whatever the case may be, you're there. We're all there for one common goal. And just by one person speaking, you may be able to change their life and someone's going to go home and use what you they heard to better themselves. And what better feeling is that? Yes, absolutely. A hundred percent agree. And I think that's one of those things that where you are just an absolute queen, I guess I'm going to use that word. word. Um, and I'm sure you're absolutely commanding on the stage because I could sit and listen to you literally for hours and, and, <laughs> and, and, and I ironically feel really good about myself, even though you were talking <laughs> like that's, that's the true sign of somebody who speaks from their heart, but also speaks, you know, not at someone, but, but with someone. Right. And yeah. I think that's also probably why you're such a successful coach is you're able to help someone tap their own potential. You're not telling them what to do. You're, right. you're showing them what can be done and allowing them the space to do that. Yeah. Um, and I do know that you're, you're a coach as well. Um, Stacy, share some of the stages, the types of audiences that you would like to be considered for a speaker. I'm just curious because everybody's different um, that speaks. So um, what does it look like for you? So I love speaking at events. Sometimes I speak in, in an event where they're having like on a certain topic and I'll go into a group setting and there'll be X amount of people there and I'll speak at an event. Sometimes I'll be in a huge conference and they'll have me on stage and I'll, I'll be speaking to either association, a corporation, you know, or I'll speak, you know, um, I'll speak to different, you know, different types of groups. But, you know, everybody, you know, likes those type of topics. How could you reach your potential? How could we avoid burnout? How can can I reduce, how can my, my people reduce stress in their lives? Because everybody wants, you know, especially in, in a company or an association or even working with, with clients, you know, that, you know, want to hear from a, uh, a, from a patient perspective. You know, I work with, with different groups in, in healthcare and, you know, the doctors and the nurses and the staff, you know, they want to, you know, they want to help their patients, but a lot of times it's confliction because, you know, they don't understand, um, um, the pa wh why the patient is reacting the way they are from a patient perspective. So they have, you know, to be able to explain, this is why they react this way. What can, you know, if you understand another human being that has a condition, well, then you might be able to relate better and work better as a team. And then I go into a team setting and I can talk to a whole group of people and say, you know, this team, you know, there are sometimes like insurance companies, I'll speak at insurance companies and insurance companies have the, the biggest retention, you know, loss where people are under such pressure that they can't stay at the jobs that long. You know, so I'll go in there and I'll speak about, you know, reducing stress, burnout, you know, how to avoid it, you know, how to release, release the stress and how to focus on, on your goals and, and to reach those goals and to reach your full potential, how to cleanse and clear the mind, you know, and, and these things work. And then even I'll, I'll go, I did a conference in, in Wyoming and I spoke in front of a group with disabilities to make these people understand that they are people too. And yeah. no matter what disability you have, you know, you, you need to feel good about yourself because you have the potential to be whatever you want to be, whatever you're capable of being, you can reach that. What is your goal? You know, don't think, don't think about what other people labelize you as don't, we have a stigmatized world. Think about what, you know, that you are number one, you are a person, you yes, are. I like to say I am the boss applesauce. <laughs> I like that. I like that. It came like from that preschool lot. training, but <laughs> Yeah, like, like well, preschoolers always say you're not the boss of me and i'm like that's all right that's all right you're not yeah, i'm the boss like of that. me i'm the boss applesauce <laughs> so I, I speak in different different types of settings you know but it all that's breaks awesome. down to like you know reaching your true potential you know how do we reach our true potential how do we overcome see, one of the things that you mentioned that stuck out to me so huge that what you just said was that you 
would speak to like physicians who treat people like that yeah. have conditions. And, you know, it's one thing to be intellectually book smart and trained on treating a, like, for example, epilepsy or any kind of disorder, disease, anything. Yeah. It's a whole nother thing if you don't have it. Right. Because you aren't going to, if you had it and you're treating it, it's a completely different, you're going to treat it completely differently because you inherently yeah. understand it. That's why I love the fact that you said you do that because that brings an entire different, um, uh, what is the word I want to say? That an entire different feeling to how a physician would treat a person who has the condition they've been trained to treat when they understand the human side of it, right? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. That's amazing. Like, I, I, I feel like I should go pitch for you to go talk to <laughs> physicians. Like, that is so needed because we've lost a lot of that human element in the medical community um, because it's gotten so prescription pad. Let me give you something to fix that. And yeah. we're not fixing something. We're helping human beings. Yeah. You know, I work with Synovian Pharmaceuticals. I work with Eastside Pharmaceuticals. I was on their advisory boards and, you know, Synovian Pharmaceuticals was so impressed. They had me do a, a feature presentation of, and then put me, they put me on a video and played it at the conferences that they were going to. And, you know, it, you know, it, 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 they need to understand how a patient feels because how could they, you know, how could they make drugs and help people if they're not understanding what the patient's needs are? And I, I commend them for that. I thought it was amazing. I, you know, and, and uh, I think it's great when doctors and nurses and medical clinicians and, and, and people in the medical field, you know, understand or are interested in understanding how the patient feels. Because when I work with both sides, the, the one thing that people say in the medical field, you know, when the, from a patient's perspective, they don't understand what I'm going through. They don't have it. And they have all this anger, you know, and the, and the doctor is trying to do the best job he can from his perspective, but he doesn't have it. So he's not exactly understanding the emotional aspect and the frustrations that they're going through. But if, if they understand and they're taught then they could come to a common ground and communicate better with the patient. And if that patient sees that compassion and they see that they're willing to understand and, and, and go the extra length to help them, then you're going to get a bond. And if you get that bond, it, you're going to create a completely different atmosphere. You yeah. Know? And absolutely interesting that you point that out because what that also does is talk, it brings together the point where you were talking about, about positivity, Right. When yeah. that bond is together and those two entities are working together on the same wavelength, yeah, the positive impact of that on the health overall up levels, right? Like it goes yeah. up, right? Um, yeah. Instead of not one person isn't talking down to another and I'm supposed to do what they say, you know, healthcare should be a joint venture, right? Yes. And I love that you bring that human element. I love it that you do it from the stage. And I think it's amazing that you can do it even from the pharmaceutical realm in, in creating that human connection and making it not just about the drug, but about the person who yeah. is in need of the drug, right? Like humanizing right. that whole thing and humanizing the condition, whatever it is. Um, right. And it's just one of the many reasons why, like, I'm like, oh, I love her. <laughs> and I just I want to tell the world about Stacey Chalimi. So I actually want to wrap up uh, our time together today, uh, inviting people to visit StaceyChalimi.com. Uh, and that's Stacey, S-T-A-C-E-Y-C-H-I-L-L-E-M-I -L -L -E for those listening. And I want to make sure that you understand that this woman is an incredible human being and that she has so much love to give mm -hmm. and so much positivity to put into the world. Um, Stacey, do you have any final thoughts for our viewers? I just, you know, I want to say to your viewers that, you know, it's so important to, to be able to share your stories in a positive realm. You really need, you know, to really 
feel good about yourself, you know, and I tell people, write 10 strengths that you have, and, you know, and focus on and then write a couple of things down that you wish you had, but you don't have, and then set some short term goals and some long term goals to strengthen those those areas that need a little tweaking, but focus on all those great things about yourself, give yourself a pat on the back and realize that you are someone special, that you are number one and you have to feel like you're number one because you are a special person. You have a story. If you could help somebody, share your story because you never know who's going to be listening and how much you could be helping that person. Don't tell the person what to do. You want to share your story and you want to share the ways that it helped you as a person. You know, the, and, you know, it's so important. And that's why, you know, it's, it's so important to be able to, you know, overcome things and not, not let it bury you down in the ground because your, need, your needs, your, your ability is beyond your belief. You really, you could accomplish more than you ever know. You have the potential to become someone great. And don't let your, 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 your obstacles in your life get in the way. You know, there are ways to overcome your obstacles and there are ways to rise above the chaos, gain the courage to act and to move forward in life. And, you know, I want to be there to help you. So if you need help, you know, feel free to reach out. If you want your story heard, feel free to reach out. You know, I have a podcast and I always have people with incredible stories come on the, on the podcast and share their stories and share how they're they're working towards helping others. And your, your story can change people's lives. And, you know, and if you're at the point where you need a little help in order to change your life contact me because I'll help you. I'll guide you, you know, and my, my book, empower yourself. Don't let your conditions empower you go step-by-step step to help people. I even created a, a, a positivity and gratitude journal because I talk about journaling. Journaling is so important. It's so powerful because sometimes people don't like to open up and talk about things to people. Well, the first step could be just writing it down on paper and, you know, being able to realize that have gratitude for what you have in life. Because you know what? We always say, I want, I want, I want. And you know what? You don't realize that the things you have around you are so priceless, you know, and people don't realize until it's taken away. And then we realize how priceless and how, how much we need in life, you know, and those things, how much they meant. So be, have gratitude, be kind to others, share your love, share your stories, you are a warrior. We all are warriors. Get your story out. Yes. Yes. Now you just know why when she walks in a room, StacyChalimi.com, you go visit her. You know when she <laughs> walks in a room, the only thing you can say or on to stage is wow. And she is living proof of that. And you've seen it here on Wow Warrior. Thank you so much, Stacy. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much, Sherry, for having me. This is such a pleasure. Thank you so much.